Hello and welcome to another very important section of this completeness JS course. In this section, we are going to learn about authentication. What do we mean by authentication and how to authenticate a user from a NestJS application? And let's start this section by understanding what is authentication and why authentication is important in a real world web application. So what do we mean by authentication? Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, device or an application. It answers the question who you are. In simple terms, authentication is like showing you ID card to prove that you are who you claim to be. And it establishes trust by confirming the subject's claimed identity. So when you try to access a secure part of a website or an application, the system needs to confirm that you are indeed the person you claim to be. So this is where authentication comes into picture. It's about answering the question, are you who you say you are? Now in context of a web application or a web API, authentication is done using a login mechanism. During the login process, the user has to provide his username or email and the password. Each user is going to have a unique username and unique email. So this username or the email, it will act as an identification for the user. Then the system also needs to verify this claim. So let's say I'm trying to log in as John Smith. So my username is John Smith 23. So first of all, the system will check if there is already a user in the database with this username or not. If the user with that username does not exist in the system, in the database, then the web API application will immediately send a response saying that user does not exist. But if the username exists in the system, in the database, then the web API also needs to verify that the user who is trying to log in with this given username, he is actually that user. And that is done by using a password. Now, this can also be done using other methods like one-time code sent to your phone or email, biometric data or security certificates. But in case of a web application or a web API, it is typically the password or the one-time code sent to your phone or email address. Here, we are taking an example of password. So in order to validate the user who is using this username, who is providing this username during login, he is actually that user or not. We also need to specify the password for that username. And when the login button is clicked, a post request is sent to the web API with that username and password. Now here, instead of username, it can also be the email which has been used during the login. But the steps are same. Okay, so once the user clicks on this login button, with the login request, the username and password is sent to the web API. Now here, the web API is going to check if with that username, we have a user in the user table of the database. Now here, I'm taking an example of user table, but it can be people table, customer table, etc. based on your application requirement. So here, first the API will check if with that username, there is already a user in the user table or not. If we have a user with that username in this user table, then the web API has to validate if the password provided during the login, if that password matches the saved password in the user table. And if the password matches, that means the user is who he is claiming to be. So in that case, the login request will be successful the user has been validated successfully and then the web API will send a response back to the client with a token attached with that response. And this token will later then be used for accessing other protected resources of the web application. And this we will understand later. But if the provided username and the password saved for that user in the database does not match with the password which has been provided during the login, that means the user is not a valid user. And in that case, the web API sends an access denied response. And this is how the authentication works. So this is a high level overview of how authentication works for a web API application. Now, the next question is, why do we need authentication in first place for a web API application? Well, there are several reasons for that. 
first of all when we implement authentication it helps us protecting the sensitive data so apis often handle sensitive user data financial information or business critical resources and without authentication anyone could potentially access modify or delete this data leading to security breaches and data leaks so in order to prevent any security breaches or data leaks we should only allow authenticated users to access the sensitive data another reason is authentication ensures that only the legitimate and authorized users or applications can access specific api endpoints and functionalities so for example let's say you are creating an e-commerce application where a normal user can see all the products as well as they can see the details of a selected product but the normal user should not have access to create a new product or delete a product or update a product detail this should be limited to the admin users only and we can achieve this with the help of authentication because for authorizing what permission a particular user should have first we need authentication also by identifying the user or application making request authentication helps track changes and actions performed through the api and this is essential for maintaining the data integrity and accountability so if we don't have authentication in place in that case if someone goes ahead and deletes a product we will never come to know who actually deleted that product but if we have authentication in place in that case first the user will have to authenticate himself then the application will know who is the logged in user and what actions he is performing so if that logged in user goes ahead and deletes a product that action can be logged in a log table which can later be used to identify who actually deleted that product so this is just a simple example i am giving here then authentication is also required for implementing authorization so authentication confirms who the user is authorization determines what they are allowed to do again if we take an example of e-commerce application the normal user should only be able to see the products and see the product details they should also be able to buy a product and track the status of the product but they should not be able to update a product or delete a product so that authorization level we can set once we have authentication in place then authentication allows you to identify and track api usage by specific clients and this enables the implementation of rate limiting and other mechanism to prevent abuses denial of service attack and excessive resource consumption then authenticated requests can be logged with the identity of the requester and this provides an audit trail for action performed through the api and this is crucial for security monitoring debugging and compliance purposes so if you have authentication in place you can log each and every action which a user is performing and finally for applications that requires user specific data or functionalities authentication is necessary to identify the user and provide a personalized experience so if you want to provide a personalized experience to a specific user like what product the user might be interested in or what videos or movies the user might like so this type of personalized experience you can give to a user only if you know who is the logged in user and studying that user specific data like for example which movies he has watched recently what genre he preferred to watch and other details and based on that you can show which type of content he might like to watch so again this is a very simple example to explain what i mean by personalized user experience all right now the authentication can be implemented in different ways in an api application but in this course we are going to look into two ways of authenticating a user the password based authentication and google authentication in this particular section we are going to learn about and implement password based authentication and in the future section of this course we will also have a look at google authentication mechanism now when we talk about password based authentication in most simple terms we are talking about user login so the user has to provide his unique email or username and password 
and this will then be verified against the database where the user information is saved so from the web api we verify whether there is a user present in the database with the given email or username or not if the user with that given email or username is present we validate the password provided by the user against that username or email and if the password matches for that email or for that username then the user is an authenticated user otherwise user is not a valid user and api does not allow user to access other protected resources now this process might seem simple when we talk about it but there are a lot of steps involved in authenticating a user and we are going to understand these steps one by one in our coming lectures in this section so this was a very high level overview of what do we mean by authentication and why it is important we also briefly understood what do we mean by password based authentication in the next lecture before we implement authentication let's learn how to secure a password provided by the user during registration before the user is created and his details are saved in the database this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day